Well, good afternoon. I'm Ken Baer, and I'm the Acting Alaska Wild Coordinator while Patty's uh, in Florida enjoying the sunshine. Uh, Ray Bolson is behind the camera, so we're going to be putting together a little video here on how to make an envelope for those of you who were selected for the show. And by the way, congratulations to all of you. To make the envelope, it's really a pretty simple process. You don't need much to do it. I've got a roll of uh, small bubble bubble wrap, which you can pick up at Costco, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, Michaels, any of a number of places. Uh, and we're gonna make the envelope out of that. A roll of duct tape, a pair of scissors, a ruler, and a couple of labels. The whole purpose of having this envelope is to protect your picture during shipping. It goes in uh, four cardboard boxes and then travels around the state, and it has to be loaded and unloaded at least 10 times during the year. So this envelope is very important. You'll notice here I have a picture, and I've got it in an envelope that I made earlier, and you'll notice it will slide in and out of the envelope very easily. I can close it up, take the two labels, affix one to the back of the picture, and affix one to the envelope, and they always go together that way, no matter who does the loading and unloading. And Ken, those labels are available from the submission package that we sent people, is that correct? That is correct. They're on the submission package that went out. They're also available on the website. If you go to asomp.org, click on Alaska Wild, scroll down to the bottom of the page, and the, uh, the label is there. You can fill it out online and print it out. In fact, mine is all very neatly typed. Thanks to Al Musi who put it online for us. Okay. Okay, so let's get started. <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is just take a measurement of the picture itself. And what I've got, the framed picture is about 19 inches by 24 inches. So I want my label, or I want my envelope, to be at least two inches on each side bigger than that. So if I just add four inches to those dimensions, I'll take 19, 21, 22, 23 by 24, 28. So 28 by 23 okay. is the envelope that I want, and that'll make it easy for the people that are hanging the show to put it in and take it out. So let me get rid of this for the moment, and we'll go ahead and start. So let's start with the roll. And how um, wide is that roll? The that roll about is, a foot? is as long as it is, and it's 12 inches wide. Okay. So if I want it 23 inches, I'm going to have to have two widths of this, and I'm going to need it to be 28, I believe, 28 yeah. inches long. And so there's my 28 right about there. So what I'm going to do is take that, fold it down, and I'm going to give it a little extra. You notice I didn't measure that really carefully because a little too big is a whole lot better than a little too small. So there's one. Now the trick to this is you've got to be smarter than the bubble wrap. And there's two, and now we can get rid of this. Okay, now it's a pretty simple process. I'm going to take these two pieces and lay them out. So I said I needed it at least 23 inches wide. I know that's 24, so if I overlap it about an inch, that's going to be that's going to be pretty good. And there's a method to my madness here. 
I'm going to line these two edges up and overlap it. And then I want this one to be 28 inches. So there's my 28 inches right there. And now I'm just going to take a piece of duct tape. piece of duct tape but do not panic because all we need is another few inches there and we're set to go. Here's and another example of how useful duct tape is. Yeah this <laughs> is the Alaska be all and end all of everything. Now that we've got that one set up there's I know where my 28 inches is so I'm just going to take the rest of this so that we've got a good solid piece. side done. Turn it over. First time I made one of these I tried this process and tried to get all the tape the exact length and I spent way too much time getting it the tape untangled. <laughs> and not a whole lot of time taping. That so, sounds like a good idea. Doing it in short strips seems to work a whole lot better. Doesn't matter what they are, just as long as you can handle them. those two done. Now let's just fold this down and we've already created an envelope and we just want to make sure that we've left enough room that it is in fact at least 28 inches and it doesn't necessarily have to be exact. Actually that comes out to about 30 and like I said I'd rather have it a little a little big than a little small because I want the picture to fit in there comfortably and easily. Right, and this is going to be put in and out many times throughout the year during exactly. the venue hangings. In fact, at least 10, unless we get some extra, maybe 11, depending on how many venues and how far the, the show has to move. Okay, I now have my envelope made. So I'm going to take a strip here to seal the outer edges and I'm just going to go about half of a about half of the width of the tape, tape it down to one side, turn that over and tape it on the other side. So this is an example of having a kitchen counter like this that it really helps to to do that maneuver there. Makes it easy. Don't yeah, even take so, this work really yeah, well too. So you don't pull up anything um, or leave behind any marks on valuable stuff. Okay, now I've learned the hard way 
that the single piece of tape is tends to rip and tear so I usually always just give it an extra boost on the edge and reinforce these corners a little bit. Put that over and do the same thing on this side. Actually, it's a pretty simple process. Once you get started, it goes very quickly. And a little bit too much there. And again, you'll notice just didn't have to plan it that way, but just by default, it overlapped and gave some reinforcement to that corner. And then we just do the same on the other side. And the important thing here is to line up the edges so that you don't get spillover. Okay, in the interest of not boring you completely to death, I taped the other side uh, off camera just to save a little time. So I'm just going to finish up the bottom here. And this is one that I, I have again learned the hard way that the bottom takes a beating. So I like to reinforce it with, with a little extra tape. Uh, I did get an envelope some time ago where it was solid duct tape from wall to wall, and that's a little bit overkill. This is plenty. And by the way, I prefer the single small bubbles on the bubble wrap. The big bubbles are available, but quite frankly, when you put this next to another one in this same kind of bubble wrap, there's plenty of protection, and it's a little thinner, so that stuff fits in the boxes better. <laughs> so I kind of like that. Okay, now, What's the next step? You may notice that I left this a little bit long. Uh, this is my 30 inches and I got a little tail here. So what I'm gonna do is now actually make it look like an envelope. And I'm just gonna cut this down in a triangle to the corner. And this can be a big flap or a little flap, whatever, whatever aesthetically pleases you. And then we'll put a little tape on that, just so that it doesn't disintegrate on us. And that's pretty good. And we'll do the other side as well. Same thing on the lip of the envelope. And this is just, again, here's some a little technique trick. Lay the tape unsticky side down, press that down, and then you can fold it over to make the lip. That's to keep it from fraying or keep, tearing keep a little this bit. Head from fraying. Yep. Or carrying on. Then I just need a little piece over here. And when you're working in the corners, the smaller the piece you're working with, the better off you are. Because everything at this point wants to stick to itself. And there we go. 
And now we'll get this one. Now, if you would like to reinforce this one too, you can with a couple of more pieces on there, but it's really not necessary because all you're trying to do is get a smooth edge uh, for your envelope. One last little, one last little thing and then we're done. And that's putting the label onto the envelope. also require that we have the same label on the back of each piece of artwork. Is that correct? That is correct. So once I get the envelope done, you'll notice at the beginning of this whole process I, I said we got two labels. So when I get my, my picture back from the frame shop, then I'll take this label and glue it to the back of the photograph. And now the two, the envelope and the label go together and they will never be separated, lost, spindled, bent, or mutilated. Or is it bent, spindled, and mutilated? <laughs> I'm not sure. Neither am I. Okay, there's your envelope. That's what it looks like. The things to remember most is that it's at least two inches on each side bigger than the picture to allow it to be put in and taken out easily and that you reinforce the sides and the, and the bottom. And we're done.